States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is please remain standing. Is um, we're going to have a moment of silence for Captain Joel Bonds and for Captain Michael Bell of Farmington, the main Farmington Main Fire Department. Is our thoughts and prayers go out to the brothers up there in Maine, Farmington? Is um, Thank you. Is I'm going to turn it over to Chief Plant now. Thank you. Thank you all for, for coming tonight. This has been a little overdue um, for a number of different reasons, but uh, it's time that we recognize uh, our staff who uh, were involved. As you all know, on May 1st, 2019, at 10.57, <clears throat> the Berwick Fire Department received a call for a building fire at 10 Bell Street with a person trapped, hanging out of the window. Engine 2 responded with a crew of four, Captain Joe Barnes, Firefighter Mitch Manfredi, which is here tonight. Thank you. Uh, firefighter Brandon Viola and Firefighter Kyle Lavoy. Upon arrival, Captain Barnes observed smoke and fire coming from the building and occupant hanging from a window. He assigned Firefighter Viola to obtain a ladder from the apparatus and go to the side of the structure to make a rescue attempt of the occupant. He then assigned f firefighter uh, Lavoy to establish a water supply to the engine. At that point, Captain Barnes, along with his partner Manfredi, entered the structure in an attempt to tuck, conduct a search for other occupants. During their efforts, something went wrong. Captain Barnes, realizing this, threw his partner to the floor, covering him with his own body. Joel's quick action saved his partner's life. Captain Joe Barnes is the true hero. On that day, the Department of the Residents of Berwick suffered a tra tragic loss of one of our own. I have recently nominated Captain Barnes for the United States Department of Justice Public Safety Officer Medal of Honor for Valor. This is selection process is ongoing and sometime in early spring we should have a determination. At this time I'd like to recognize Firefighter Mitchell Manfredi and Firefighter Kyle Lavoy for their efforts during this event. It is my honor to present each of them with an official proclamation re which reads, be it hereby proclaimed that I, Dennis Plant, Fire Chief, Town of Berwick, Fire Department, extend my commendation and congratulations to Firefighter EMT Kyle, Kyle Lavoy in recognition of your utmost professional heroic efforts while fighting a four alarm fire on fr Friday, March 1st, 2019. Your quick response and quality decision making were key in the rescue efforts made in the rescue of our fallen brother, Captain Joel Barnes. Given this 24th day of September, 2019, at the town hall, I got broke fight apartments. Signed Dennis Plant and firefighter Mitchell and Freddie. Please come forward. It is my pleasure. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Mitch. As noted above, Firefighter Viola was assigned to obtain a ladder from the apparatus in an attempt to make the rescue that was hanging out of the window. With the assistance of Police Officer uh, Eli Poor and Detective Steve Schisler, all were able to place the ladder and successfully rescue the occupant. Because of their quick action, the trapped occupant was rescued. 
These individuals are to be commended for their quick action and effort in conducting this operation. Their actions not only reflect highly upon themselves, but to the entire public safety excuse me, <coughs> agencies they serve. I would like to present to Firefighter Viola, Officer Eli Poor, Detective Schisler, uh, the Medal of Honor for their life-saving efforts. Gentlemen. Please step forward. I got to make sure I get the right ones here. <laughs> Eli? Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Steve? Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. I also have certificates for you. Don't run away yet. Anybody like to take a picture? <laughs> Brandon? I told you I'd make it short and sweet. Gentlemen, thank you for your service. Thank you for what you did. It's hot in here. Okay, in concluding my portion of this, I want to thank the membership, the Brewer community, and the community mutual aid departments for their support throughout this period of time. We will never forget. Uh, with that, we have some visitors from Falmouth uh, Fire who would like to uh, step up to the mic, which is my pleasure and uh, say a few words. Uh, good evening. Uh, Joel was in our uh, fire officer class, so this class is actually made up of uh, Portland, Long Island, Scarborough, um, and Lisbon, Sabatis fire departments, as well as some others that couldn't make it today who are working. Um, so I wanted uh, Jordan Stewart from the class to say a few words. We um, also have uh, some coins at the class. Uh, we put in our own money and made up uh, to give to the family and to the uh, Berwick Fire Department. So it was you, Chief. Thank you very much. Yep. And Jordan will say a few words on behalf of the class. Um, so Joel was in our uh, fire officer, advanced fire officer class. He took my, the basic fire officer with me also. Um, in the advanced fire class, we sat together at the table. He was a pretty uh, quiet guy. Shocking, right? But he was a smart guy. Um, he had a lot of knowledge um, doing the tabletop exercises where we talked through things. Um, he was always somebody that you want to listen to. Um, and then to find out what happened to him, um, just being the ultimate fire officer, just really gave us something to strive towards for the rest of the class. Um, so we were able to dedicate the rest of our class to him and Chief Sako, who was one of our uh, instructors. We had the coins made up. Um, but he, uh, he was a big part of our class and later on down the line for me as a fire officer, I'm going to remember what he did, um, and try to be the man that he was. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, 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 oh I'm no, sorry. Oh, go ahead. You didn't see me stay the engine. I didn't. Oh. Good evening. My name is Peter Rines. I'm the Certification Program Manager for Maine Fire Service Institute. Uh, on behalf of my director, who could not be here, uh, he had a previous engagement. It was really odd for me. Uh, I heard the call. I heard the call that the very next day, cell phones. <laughs> the first. <laughs> everybody does it. It's okay. The the first folder that I opened the next morning um, in the office was. The, the fire officer class that I had visited earlier that year 
and uh, Joel's was the first name in the folder. And then as the events all unfolded, it just seemed fitting to me that he be recognized for his time in the class and his inspiration to others because any of us in the room know that any call, it doesn't matter what it is, even if you do everything 100% right, right down the line, it still can go badly wrong. So in his honor, we've had, he is an official graduate of the Fire Officer 1 and 2 class. He has his Pro Board certification, and I've had two of these made up, one for uh, the Fire Department. Chief, that is for you to hang Thank in you. your station. Appreciate that. And I have a second one for the family. If there's someone here that was wonderful, if not, we'll make sure that they get it. And uh, Thank you very much. It's uh, our pleasure. No, they let me get away with saying mm -hmm. something. Um, I, I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, but one person that we've overlooked in this whole situation is the man in charge, no, Chief I Plant. Is throughout this whole thing, Chief Plant was there. He was on the front lines. And without his leadership, I don't know what the town could have done. So I would like to thank Chief Plant. And thank you. The chief can't do it without those guys. Those guys are the guys that are on the front line. Anyways, that's it. I want to thank you very much, and I appreciate you stopping in and uh, doing the presentations. And uh, we're moving on. Thank you. That's it. Sorry, no supper, no. Thank you. Yeah.
I'm sure that the uh, department is going through some rough times right now. Um, next order of business is the approval of our September 10th minutes. I move we uh, accept the minutes as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Three zero. Thank you. And, um, since we have no public here, I don't think we have a public comment. Um, a public hearing. We have a public hearing tonight on the general assistance maximum adoption. As, uh, maybe perhaps the town manager could uh, give a little background. Every year at this time, uh, we are required to adopt uh, and changes, if any. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure what the changes are, if there are any, um, but we should have. There's a spreadsheet I compiled to compare 2018-2019 versus 2019-2020. Um, there are overall maximums increased. You can see the percentages. The other increases are food and housing, basically. And, these, and these I believe burials went up. I didn't include that in the spreadsheet, <coughs> but. These are all uh, s more or less set by the state guidelines. Yes, yes they are. So they are. Is the, the, even though they're recommendations, is they're all state mandated more or less. The board can choose to make their own. Right. But you, typically you go by the state right. recommendations. Um, is there any benefit to doing it ourselves or any penalty? No, no, we don't have very much for general assistance. We budget ten thousand every year, but um, it, we, if we spend two thousand, that's a lot. Most of it's in heat, yep. and there's other areas that also help other right. nonprofits. Uh, right, it, and occasionally, occasionally, you know, there's, uh, the town will make a rent payment or something like that. Yeah. On, on behalf of a person, but as, as Steve said, it, is most mostly it's uh, I, I believe it's been under four thousand yeah. dollars for the last several years yeah. that we've actually spent. It's been a good economy, so most people, are, a lot of people are working. But mm. I I've always felt the guidelines are fair. Um, sometimes they don't cover the rent part of stuff. That's the biggest one that I've always looked at because uh, rents are very high in this area. Uh, but we, we we do what we can. And sometimes uh, this is might be a percentage or a small amount of what they get towards their rent, but they have other means. But again, we really don't see a lot of uh, need or request for assistance, so mm. which is good. And these are minimums or maximums. Maximums. Of what somebody can come in. Yeah. Yeah. So these are maximums. Okay. And, and they they have to they go through a vigorous questioning. Um, and they have to show all their, if they have any income, uh, any expenses, there's quite a f bit of questions that they have to answer. And uh, so um, it's not easy generally for the people who are coming in to request help. But it's there for if they need it, so. Are we just having a public hearing on this, but are, are we voting on it? Yeah, you're voting on it after. We're voting on it. Okay. Yeah, we will be voting on it. Any public comment? <laughs> <laughs> no. I move that we accept the uh, general percent, uh, maximums as presented. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Three zero. I'll close the public hearing. Uh, reports of committees is a BCTV. They have not m had their monthly meeting, so I don't know what they have going on. Envision Berwick is um, we are working on moving forward with the comprehensive plan. Is our first meeting is October six, I believe, where we'll be going through the, uh, the 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 groundwork and getting things straightened out. Um, I know that they're working on. The farmer's market is getting ready to uh, get going in November, I believe. So is, uh, they're working on that also. Is the crafters fair as well coming up? Um, that's 
through the Legion, I believe. Yeah, there's two in October, um, the Ladies Auxiliary and then the Legion. I think it's the Riders, but I'm not completely sure. But, yeah, so two coming up. So we have no department reports, no appointments or presentations, unfinished business is a town manager report. I have a list of things. Um, we had talked about uh, uh, editing the personnel policy. That's one item that you will get copies of. Also, the purchasing policy, which is one that you had requested in before, and the uh, finance director and I have gone through that, and we've made some recommended changes. Um, and also, the impact fees. Um, we'll make that transition as well. I'm going to try to get all this out to you before your next meeting probably next week. Uh, it's not a lot of difference, but uh, give you a chance to go through it, look at it, and make recommendations at your next meeting. Um, Pine Hill uh, Road is uh, being torn up, parts of it. They're doing it in halves. They're going to do half the road, reclaim it, bring in whatever we need for material, grade it, and then pave it because this is a base layer. And then when that is done, they'll work on the other half. It's less disruptive to the traveling public. Uh, and once that's all done, that finishes our paving for the year. Um, we redid the parking lot. We actually gained an additional 10 spots. Okay. So we have 50 parking spaces now, which is really good. They did a nice job. Um, prime site, uh, they have, uh, they'll be finishing up the parking lot before they do the blue sort building. At the prime site, they had to go back. There was a uh, change order because the lab tests came back that were um, still above and beyond the requirement for contamination. So they've gone back and dug it all up. And I think the tests have passed. So uh, we'll be uh, closing up that site. And uh, the plan uh, right now is to uh, pave over the area that they dug up the pavement. And, and compact it and close it back in with some hot top. And then they wanted, the recommendation was to go through and crack seal everything and then do a um, uh, driveway type sealer. Hi, Tom. How you doing? How you doing? Not uh, bad. Hi. On the whole thing. Uh, and that will finish it up oh, for that. I'm sorry. And, uh, and then the blue sweat building, they're still removing the asbestos from the walls. And, and uh, once that's done, they'll seal up the floor. Um, the fire station uh, project, we finally got DEP approval. <laughs> yes, finally. Um, which is nice. Um, and hopefully they can start digging next week. Uh, the demolition of the Esterbrook School is going to be a little bit behind that uh, <coughs> because the CMP is coming on Friday to change out the power source into the police station and also the uh, uh, BCN, the phone company, is expected to be on site uh, tomorrow to change the phone lines. So that will give uh, uh, Renault Excavation uh, an opportunity to, to get started on that as well. Um, luckily we couldn't hear the floors being sanded tonight. Um, yeah. <laughs> I thought the auditorium that. floor has, uh, they've got it all stripped and they're just doing the sanding. Right now they're on the medium grade. Uh, it's been a big project, a lot of depth in the wax that was on the floor, um, but they're doing a nice job. Um, the Spirit of America Award, I sent you all uh, something on that. On November 6th at the York County uh, building, there'll be a presentation and recognition of all the um, Spirit of America people. Um, I will be there. I was last year, and I'm going to try to get uh, Eleanor there. Eleanor there. Um, I sent it to Andrea too. So yeah, <laughs> they kind of travel as a pair sometimes, and also uh, Beth O'Connor, so she can do her uh, sentiment then. Um, otherwise, uh, we're very busy looking for space throughout the town office. To the code office and planning office is extremely busy um, assessing. Uh, is busy and we, we need to jockey people around to try to create better working space for people. So there'll be some changes, hopefully, recommended after the, the floor is done and we settle back down. But 
So that's coming. But that's all I have for now. I have a question. Was there ever a plan this year to be paving Cranberry Meadow? We, it was on our list, but when the prices came in, we didn't have enough money. Okay. Because I, I feel like I heard it, and then it, it just yeah, never yeah. came around, and, and now paving is going to be done with Pine Hill. So yeah. I was just wondering if I was imagining things. No. Oh. Cranberry Meadow was on the list, um, just, and just one section of it. Yeah. I think it's between Worcester Road and Cemetery Road, which yeah, is the worst. Yeah, that's where it's the worst part. And what we had planned to reclaim that and put a base layer down, but we just didn't have the funding. We had 600000 uh, It just doesn't go enough <laughs> very far. <laughs> But it's on the list for next year, okay. um, along with uh, some others. Uh, river, uh, you can leave cemetery off. No, no, cemetery's on the list. Little River Road's on the list. Set, but Little River Road and um, the other roads are pretty long, and, and we, Robert yeah. and I, are trying to you break them down. We have to break them into sections, which is unfortunate. But it's just we just can't do them all at once. Um, and we're concerned about some of the roads that are still in fairly good shape, and we've been crack sealing them, like Sanford Road, uh, Guinea Road, and, and the section of Black Berry, uh, Hill that didn't get done four years ago. We really, Robert's pushing me pretty hard to get those on the list so we could uh, do a shim and overlay, which gives us the road. These roads are in good condition, basically, right. but they're starting to show wear, and this would seal them up good for a long time. So. It's a shocking around, but we took our worst roads first and cleaned up some of the easier roads, but uh, we have more work to do next year. So. And we're going to try to do the paving earlier next year? Is that the goal? Well, <laughs> I talked to, yeah, I talked to uh, the uh, public works director uh, in South Berwick, and uh, they use the same company, and uh, they, are going, they have been through the same thing. So um, I don't know if it would have made any difference no matter what we had done, but we are going to get them done earlier. Uh, and the tough part is, is getting a firm price out of them because they wait until the last minute to see the price of oil and base it on that. Cause it's, but um, we, we know what we want to do next year, so it's just a matter of getting it out, and that's, that should be pretty straightforward. The other part that I see is we have to get it in the budget, and we have to get the budget approved before we can start spending the money. Yeah, we can't spend the money until July 1. We, and we don't approve the budget until June. June, June, right. June yeah. It takes effect July 1, so therefore you're yeah. already behind the eight ball of trying to get right. and started. John and I, John St. Pierre, from uh, we've been talking, and, and he's been talking to the town manager in South Berwick about reaching into New Hampshire for other uh, competition, other pay people who do paving, because we just don't have the people down here that do that. You have Libby Scott, you have Pike, um, and those are the only ones that yeah, can handle it. When you it. jump over into New Hampshire, then you start running into like Continental and things like yeah, that. Big companies. Is, yeah. uh, so that's, that's, I want to keep it in Maine, but we, we've got to get right. competitive prices. Yep, So I agree. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, it, we we actually started the meeting at six o'clock today. Uh, uh, we we had a we had a presentation by the fire department, and uh, they wanted to get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, the meeting started. If, if there's something that you wanted to say, something in the public hearing, or is. Uh, well, we just wanted to introduce ourselves to the uh, coming to these meetings. I mean, we've been living in the town yeah. for it's, 19 it's, years. Is step to step to the microphone if you would. And oh. Yourself. <laughs> Nobody can hear what you're saying at home, but okay. is, um, you know, is we appreciate. It. I, I, I'll break the regular our regular order here, but you know, is we, we meet at six thirty. Six thirty usually, yes. Um, let's see. My name is Neil Linsky. I live on Blackmore Road in uh, in Berwick. Uh, we're kind of the uh, the little private road that's been fought uh, with between the towns of South Berwick and Berwick for eons, and yeah. uh, Berwick won this time. <laughs> we get most of our services from uh, South, South Berwick, Berwick, actually. Yeah. Our phone number and our uh, mail pickup is South Berwick, and I think every now and again uh, the ambulance services uh, fight over uh, who comes to, uh, you right, know, whether to it's our New York or American Ambulance, right? So yeah, yeah we uh, yeah because if you throw a rock. About 30 feet from our house, uh, it goes over the tracks and is in South Berwick. Right. So, um, yeah, I think uh, my wife and I uh, decided to come to this, m 
these meetings. So we've been living in the town for 19 years, and it seems uh, about time that we uh, started showing up. Um, you know, yeah. we, we appreciate it. I've, 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 I've known you for quite a long time. Yeah. I haven't talked to you for a while, but right. is uh, things things have kind of well, fallen by the wayside, but gone through several uh, joint replacement surgeries so yeah. <laughs> kind of been out of uh, out of whack for a couple of years I'm now starting to be able to walk again so so now I can show up well, thank so, you Neil um, one question that we have is that uh, this year uh, the uh, the town was reassessed for uh, property values yes and uh, we found that um, our uh, assessment on our home was uh, went up um, about uh, thirty two thousand uh, dollars actually more thirty six thousand um, and <clears throat> it seemed like a lot more than it was in the previous times that uh, the assessment has happened. I didn't. I don't know if there was uh, if that was across the board for everybody's property because uh, it seems like across America, people's. Uh, it depends on where you live as to whether uh, property values have actually gone up. I didn't know whether no. Berwick was, um, you know, something that. special that our our values have gone up. Well, um, we. The state recommends that we do a reval every 10 years, and we just finished this reval townwide. Um, and the um, assessments or values of homes in southern Maine have all gone up in general. Uh, we've seen it here in uh, Berwick, South Berwick. They, you don't believe that? No, I, I have a tremor, so I'm Oh, okay, sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... It's really based on the most recent sales, um, and that's how the assessors do it. If, if there's a question, um, the assessors are very open to, to re-looking mm -hmm. at par property. Uh, they're getting a lot of calls since the tax bills went out. Right. Um, so right. I know- Well, they did come out to our property. We, we came to one of those um, you know, uh, short meetings, and they sent somebody out so that they could, because the first time they came out was uh, just uh, the person was by themselves, and the second time was with us. Yeah. So, and um, <clears throat> you know, it's just it's just kind of a shock in this day and age uh, to have bills like that. Because I mean, right now both of us are on Social Security, and um, you know, so it's it's hard, uh, you know, to uh, to meet those uh, obligations. Because since we've moved there, um, our um, our tax bill has gone up two and a half times. In 19 years, I don't know if that's a lot or uh, so. It, it just seems like I would just, you know, part of the reason for moving to Maine uh, from New Hampshire is because uh, New Hampshire pays, um, you know, five or six times what we do here, and so you know yeah. we're trying to keep our uh, our payments down. Yeah. No, I, I agree. The um, you're not the only person. The average average increase in the town was about 11 percent. Okay. Um, I know that my went up about that amount too, and I'm paying more in taxes as well. And in terms of 19 years for two and a half percent, give or two take. Two and a half times. Two and a half times. 250 percent. Two and a half, 200, 200, two and a half times. Yeah. In my experience, or at least what I've, you know, researched in terms of history, every 20 years with inflation, you're going to have about a doubling of value. Okay. So I mean, that's a that's it's about on par there so yeah we're we're just you know being on a private road uh, the state of maine put us in the position where we have to provide uh, our own um, you know plowing our own road grading so basically the town we have no garbage pickup uh, basically the town it doesn't do a whole lot for us except collect our taxes so uh, you know and you know we're glad to be you know we have a transfer station which is very nice I mean get to bring all kinds of stuff there and uh, um, but but we don't get a whole lot of services from the town um, you know to uh, and we and we have to pay ourselves um, to pay somebody to in fact I'm surprised he's not here Mark's company uh, who's one of the other selectmen um, uh, Salmon Falls landscaping does the uh, the plowing for oh, our right. uh, for our road um, I was hoping I could meet him. I, I'm the treasurer of the Road Association. I've never actually met him. He's uh, working right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm guessing that. Uh, so, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if that's true for the, you know, other private yeah. roads. So we, we don't get any kind of dispensation for being a private road and having, having to basically pay our own way because the state of Maine is who mandated, you know, that we take care of our own. Yeah. So. 
Right. Well, it's uh, the services that, that provide. It's it's hard to put to put a finger on it, but you know you get police protection, you get yep. fire protection. South uh, Berwick, <laughs> you know, and we uh, try to keep our roads in good shape, which is not cheap, and we're kind of playing catch up over from six years of neglect that happened here. Uh, but also keep in mind that the school budget is probably the biggest percentage of what drives the taxes. We try to keep our taxes very flat if we can or what, how we increase it. But it also drives us when we have to, you know, repair roads and rebuild roads and things like that. So it's an awful lot of that impacts the tax rate. But um, and I think on the tax bill, you, they, we break it down to yep. what percentage is school, town, and count, county. Um, and all of this, this group especially, and I know my, myself and my new finance director thinks it's way too high. <laughs> but she, she's coming from a town where the tax rate is much smaller. But we're going to work real hard, and we do every year, to, to make sure we don't have a, a huge increase. But sometimes it's to no avail because um, I'm not complaining about the schools. We have to educate our children, but mm -hmm. the, the cost of education is very, very high. So you're, you're saying that the, uh, the, the next uh, reassessment won't be for 10 years? Yeah, 10 years, yep, or more. It, they try to keep it so it's around 100% of value, um, and uh, if it gets down below uh, 80 to 60%, the state really frowns on us not to do an update. So, and I know for one who came down here thinking I was gonna buy, be able to buy a house in this area, and I live in, up north and towards Augusta, and the prices are considerably different, <coughs> you know, Higher in terms of value. Huh? Higher or lower? Oh, much lower up where I live. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's why you haven't sold your house. <laughs> yeah. I put my house on the market, I had seven people look at it, and, right. uh, and they kept, Realtors kept asking me to drop the price, and I said, no. Yeah. Got to a threshold that I wouldn't do it. But um, down here, the prices are, um, I, down here I could probably get uh, two, two to three times what I have up at north. So it's, right. I like where I live, so uh, I travel. <laughs> this is an expensive community, and that's the, you know, it's a lot of the people who live yeah. here all Dang their lives <laughs> have the same scenario. Yeah. It's it's uh, yeah. if you're coming, you want to increase your size of your house. It's pretty hard yeah. if you're uh, unless you have a, a, a big mortgage. But it's unfortunate. But, and the price, what we my assessors are telling me, what's coming into town, or you know, you have people. They aren't main people moving in. Um, it's people from Connecticut, Massachusetts, and uh, so it's a little bit different because they're trying to get out of. Connecticut t is tax is awful, so. Right, right. Uh, and they have income taxes and say Yeah. Right. <coughs> but anyway, that's okay. enough of my lecture. <laughs> but hey, if you have any questions about your assessment, please don't hesitate to come <coughs> see Karen or Paul, who's ever here for the assessment. They're here Mondays and Wednesdays. And yeah, I think we, we met them um, when we came for the re review session before they sent out uh, that person to uh, take a look at it with yeah. us. Okay, good. Thank you, Neil. Okay. You're welcome. Good seeing you again. Yeah, nice you. Now, back to the regular business. <laughs> is uh, I have no selectman's communications. That brings us to our account payables. <clears throat> we have a uh, account payable warrant 2011 for September 12th, 2019, for the amount of $130,886.21. We have a water warrant, 011, for um, September 12th, 2019, for the amount of $4,621.42. Account payable warrant, 2012, from September 19th, 2019, for the amount of $990,686.01. The water warrant, 012, from September 19th, 2019, for the amount of $3,307.02. There's a payroll warrant, 2012, from September 19th, 2019, for the amount of $59,779.92. And we have a payroll warrant, 2013, 
from September for September 26, 2019, for the amount of $54,823.50. So they'll make a motion to pay the bills. Sorry. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. That's two weeks worth of bills. <laughs> um, let's see. New business is we need to set a public hearing date for the November 5th town election. Is it looks like it's being uh, suggested for October 22nd. Yes, please. <laughs> is uh, that, that the last day we can do it? It meets the criteria that we need to meet, yes. Okay. Because <laughs> that's all we need to know. Is uh, Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, set the public hearing date for the November 5th town election for it to be October 22nd. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Um, Patty, on a, an election you know, related question, um, we we're scheduled to have a March primary, correct? Mm -hmm. Is May, March 3rd, is it? I believe so. It, now, is that, that would be an election that we could have other things on warrants for the town to vote on yes. also? So yeah. if, so we if we, we had something that we wanted to do before the June election, we could have time to do it then, so. Okay. okay. Is, uh, I, I just realized, I just remembered that we're having another election. We don't usually have one in the springtime, so. Um, so now we come to personal property. Our new finance director <coughs> and I, uh, she went through some of the personal property, old uh, uh, amounts, go back as far as 2012, 2009 on some of them. Uh, they've been in the collection process uh, through the Thomas Agency and they've had no luck to collect them. Um, for recommendation is that we just write these off and we come off the books because we're not going to collect. Which ones of these are businesses that are still in operation? Um, um, I don't think any of them are. I believe they are. Which one? Is uh, Berwick Family Health, I believe, is still in operation. No, he's, that's a, a different, no, I don't think he is. That, yeah, that's I was told that he's, he is out of there. Oh well, that's the one that was over by the fire. Over department. by the yeah. over next to the over Dairy Queen. Yeah, I mean, overhead yeah. there. Yeah, are you sure? Because I believe he's still the same guy operating there. But I want to <coughs> check. We can double check. But is that Bracket and Shaw is still doing business? Where are they? They're down here on the river, the tractor place, off of uh, Bridge Street. Is uh, Danny Dusa? Yeah, is still in business. I'm not uh, worried about the nine dollars. Is uh, Gary Day is still in business? Daybreak time. Oh, okay. Um, is <clears throat> I don't know about any of the others. I think that the others may be, you know, closed. But <clears throat> is um, yeah, some some of these are ongoing businesses, and I have a real hard time forgiving this. Well, there's no. I don't think there's a reason to forgive their their taxes when they're still operating their business and just refusing to pay for ten years. For how would you recommend trying to collect from them if you, you handed it over to an agency and and they can't seem? It'd to probably be improper if I did it, huh? Yeah, that wouldn't be <laughs> a good <laughs> idea. If we go down with, with no, 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 no. I, I know these people. Well, is um, and you know is. Is I have I, I have a hard time forgiving the taxes if they're still here. You know, I pay my taxes. Is I'm sure you pay your taxes. You pay your taxes. Well, if you take them to court, small is, claims court, that will cost. Is, uh, that's, that's the concern. That right. That it'll cost more to collect than it will be to get it. Yeah. Yeah, especially like uh, nine dollars and four cents. Right. Well, I'm not worried about the. I'm worried about the ones in the four digits territory. I don't think uh, that that they just if they're still operating, they need to they need to pay up like everybody else does. Oh. And and if we and if going to court and we spend a little bit more than we make back, at least we set the precedent that we're not just going to write off if you ignore your tax bill. 
uh, which I think is more important in the long run because at least we can go back to people that aren't paying and now we can say, look, we took these people to court, we'll take you to court if we have to, you should just pay your bill now and save everyone the trouble. I feel like that's more important in the long run than, than just these small claims right now. It's up to you. Um, Again, only if these are still operating businesses. If right. they've gone out um, of business, then there's, what are you going to, you can't bleed blood from a stone. You can't, right. uh, but if they're still operating. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to move to table this for now. Okay. Is, uh, Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Because, yeah, it is. Do we have some way, somebody that can go look and figure out which, it, what are still operating? Yep. I mean, yep. if they, if they're here but they've changed business, the business has gone out of, and they're right. they're operating under something else. Then yeah. That's that's the same. That's thing. That's different. Right. That's, that's the same game. They're just they're just yeah. switching hats. Yeah. But um, I'll 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 talk to the town manager a little bit more about this. But like I said, it is you know, some of these some of these people are still here, and you know is. My job here, sitting in this chair, is to make sure that you know we do things properly and fairly to everybody in town. Oh. And so, all right, we'll table that one. Um, we have no quick claims, no abatements. Uh, second public comment. You've had your public comment. You want to get up and say something else, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the only one yeah. yeah, if you if you if you're gonna say well, something, yes, yeah, but. Is <laughs> you you oh, the you stand up you stand up like I do. <laughs> yeah, well, I've had both both knees replaced and both hips replaced, so yeah. just takes a toll on you. Oh, I know. To walk again. Yeah. Um, I guess my only comment was is that uh, uh, the road association by the state of Maine has required us to uh, to adopt certain rules. You know, when it comes to people who are in arrears of uh, of paying dues, um, you know, on the road association, we have the same problem, except in a microcosm of the town, obviously. Um, and we have, a, a, you know, a letter has been sent out to every member, all 12 members, uh, including Mark, um, that um, if they're in arrears for a year, that... Um, the, you know, uh, a lawyer will be become involved, and that the person will be responsible for uh, court costs. So I don't know if that's something the town does when it tries to collect from people or not. Yeah, we do that with um, so that's code it. violations and stuff. So yeah. yeah, we have the right to do that. Yeah. No. Thank you, Neil. Um, is we do have an executive session down here? Yep. Is, is uh, but is um, <coughs> is uh, Patty? had some other business that she wanted to bring up is uh <coughs> so every year we renew um auto graveyard permits these expire october 1st of every year and they go through to the following um september 30th so we have four in town berwick iron and metal pete's motor parts Southern New Hampshire Hydroelectric and Heavy Truck Sales of New England. Code has been out, inspected all four, they're all good. Um, I have received three applications, three payments of their $50 annual fee. So if you could tonight approve those three, which is all but the Heavy Truck Sales of New England, hopefully it will get burned by the next meeting. All right. Um, so we have Southern New Hampshire Hydroelectric Development Corporation, Pete's Motors Parts, and Berwick Iron and Metal Recycling, and they've all met the standards and paid the permits. Is yes. The you have ahead. copies of their application in your binder, and they've all paid their fee. And passed the code inspection. I'll make a motion that we renew the three licenses for uh, Berwick Iron Metal Recycling, Peter. Uh, Pete's Motor Parts. Pete's Motor Parts, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Look in three places. And uh, Southern New Hampshire Hydraulic 
Development Corporation. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Um, and the executive meeting is just for Updates a dis discussion, correct? Yeah. Uh, no no votes will be taken or anything? Nope. Um, <coughs> so, um, is I will make a motion that we go into executive session under Title I, subsection 405. 6A for discussion of personnel. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? There will be no actions taken, so is uh, well, sir. Thank you.